this looks like a mess and it is this is part of i'm going to show why there's a rotation to a magnetic field and how that makes eddy currents work in uh, paramagnetic materials so i'm going to break all this down for you first of all i've got a neodymium sphere magnet the red painted side is the north the blue painted side is the south so that's that's there we're going to use that in a minute that's why this is here i've made these hemispherical hemispherical coils it's like two halves of a coil that's going to go around that magnet and you want to know how i made those there's glue on the outside that's why they look so funky on the outside but you see the shiny copper on the inside this is laminated copper wire uh, number 24 or so and I coiled them up and I'm going to show you how I'm going to hook that up in a minute and those are kind of like a, a pancake coil like this just a pancake coil but they're wound in like this you know like a spring type situation but they're real tight you know one winding after another after another so that the, the magnet basically fits in there like that half that way and the other half will be on the other side that way if you see and like i said all this is to show you how basically how the rotation of the magnetic field of a regular magnet which this is doing in my hand it's it's accelerating gravity and it's rotating and i'm going to show you that in a minute i can't feel it can't see it can't show it to you but i will in a moment and like i said these coils if you put two of these back to back you see how if they're wound the same way they connect here and it goes in one direction i it's hard to do with one hand and i'm all caught up now It looks like one continuous coil. If I touch those ends together, just swirls through one way, all the way through it. I'm showing these big ones so you see what's going on when I put these together. They're both going one direction. Comes in, uh, swirls around, catches this one, swirls on around, and, and comes out this one. So these both basically swirl in one direction. Zzz, from one end to the other. They're both wound to be that way. And if you want to know how I wound these, how I made them, they're hemispherical coils, hit me up on my website on this, this uh, clip, and I'll tell you how I did it. Anyway, so back here I've got an AC connector. You know, just a regular out of the wall, 120 volt, 60 hertz, with a switch on it, to a DC adapter. And it's like 15 volts uh, DC. And here's the ends of that. And what I'm going to do, and I'm going to show you the setup in a minute. And I'm doing this so you can see the breakdown of what I'm doing. So I'm going to get rid of these coils so they're not distracting us. These were just to, to explain what these are actually doing and, and the shape they are and what they are. So I'm going to get rid of those. And we'll go back to, to the experiment. And we know our magnet, the blue side is south, the red side is north, so I'm going to move it back here. We'll use it in a moment. I'm going to hook uh, a red clip up to the hot side of the AC adapter. Well, it's AC to DC adapter, 15 volts. One to the hot side and the black one to the negative, like so. I will have these hooked. And when I have... Uh, these coils are going to be on this little stand and to show you this little stand is two plastic bolts They're nylon bolts with a plastic spacer and there's a steel nut back here to so I can tighten them and what I'll do is Put this magnet south side that way in this hemisphere coil Like so the blue sides inside and I'll put the red side in this side, and then these are cupped so that they press against the magnet with the holes. Let me show you the holes. The holes in the coil uh, 
sorry. Let the, uh, let me move the nut back. The holes in the coil, let me put them on these posts, these threaded bolts where I can put the magnet inside both coils with the, the south one way, the north the other way, and I can pinch them in there so the magnet stays up here and it's, it's, it's uh, isolated and insulated. And once I do that, then I'm going to energize these coils uh, to show you the positive and negative effects of how a rotation of the magnetic field of this magnet makes a difference in how these coils react. So I've got the south going to your right, the north going to the left. I'll hook those together, put the magnet in, bring my uh, coils together. Let me get a little tension on it. So that the magnet is pretty much stationary. I mean, I could heat this up with juice, the magnet might spin, but I'm gonna put some pressure on it so it can't move because that's not what I wanna show. And I'll tighten that up. The magnet's secure. The coils are free to move in and out, if you see. That's what the spacers are for. The coils can go out or they can go in, out or in. Okay, I've got the magnet inside here. And if you notice, the blue north is to the right. I got ink on my finger. And the red, or I'm sorry, the blue south is to the right. The red north is to the left. Now I've got my coils of wire here. They're just sitting on that bolt. And I've got it soldered here, a couple little solder points here to make my connections. And if you come in from this way, it goes counterclockwise, which means it goes counterclockwise out of this coil, counterclockwise into that coil. But if you look at it from this end, it will look like it's going clockwise. Okay. And I'm going to show you an experiment, which I'm going to do with this, with these counter and clockwise motions uh, that will explain that the magnet, which if you saw my magnetic uh, explanation of how the ether static charge uh, works with magnets, as that comes in, it's not just coming straight in, it's, it's rotating. And we're going to show that next is how that rotation works with a natural magnet. Let me show that, and then we'll come back to this, what I'm gonna do with these coils, and the direction I run the current will make you see that what I'm showing you with the other videos is correct. I'm gonna move on to that. Okay, I've got the magnet in there with the, the south side to your right, the north side to your left. The uh, coils of my wire are going counterclockwise this way, but if you look at it from this side, it's going clockwise. So it just depends on which side you're looking at it and which way I energize them to get the results we're gonna get. All magnets, if you, um, I'm gonna show you in here in just a second, all magnets have a, a, a particular direction that they accelerate gravity. If you saw my magnetism video, you'll understand. Magnets accelerate gravity. They don't just accelerate it, it accelerates in a rotation. Just like the electron function illusion, it accelerates in a, in a particular direction. So I'm gonna show that now, and I've shown it before in other videos, but I want you to look at that before I show you the experiment I'm gonna show here with these coils around, a, these uh, hemispherical coils around a spherical magnet to show you why the rotation makes a difference. Well, we'll move on to you seeing those videos, then we'll come back to this. And we'll do that now. Magnets are south to north. They align gravity in one direction. But anytime gravity moves, or even magnetics, anytime the ether static charge moves, it goes in vortexes because it doesn't really want to move, so it tries to find a way out. And here a magnet, you're showing a north side towards a TV screen, you'll see the north side vortexes it in a particular direction, to the right. When you flip the magnet around, the south side vortexes it the opposite direction, to the left. 
but in actuality, both sides are moving the same direction. It just depends on which way you're looking at it, from the left or from the right, or from the south or from the north. And I'm going to show that here. But as you go around, you watch the video here, as it goes around, they're both spinning in the same direction. The vortex goes all the way around the magnet, complete, completely around it, but here I'm just showing some lines, these circle lines. But if you notice, they're both moving in the same direction. The north diverted and the south input are both rolling away from us on top in this particular animation. And what I'm going to show here in a minute is when you look at each one from the end, they look like they're moving in opposite directions. But they're actually moving in the same direction when you consider the mass that's magnetized itself. Okay, this is just to show even more uh, <laughs> proof of my theory. I've got my microwave transformer hooked into the wall out of the six-way, uh, running AC, north-south, north-south, back and forth. Then it comes out of those two wires into the bridge rectifier, which I showed you before, which makes it only come any, either side of the AC that's pushing out comes out the red wire. Either one of them that's pulling in comes in the black wire. So in other words, I took the AC from the transformer secondary coil, bridge rectified it into this coil. So in other words, I've got a DC current coming out of the rectifier, out the red wire. Either one of the ACs that's pushing out comes out the red into this end of the coil, which is the south because it's coming in, goes through the coil, wraps around, and pops out the black back into the transformer. This coil is running DC only, one way. In the red, out the black. South input, north output. Okay, my first setup is I have the north end of the magnet near the north end of my electromagnetic field when I turn it on. What I want you to see is north to north will repel. I'm going to turn it on and so you notice the north end pushed away and especially in the direction that the north of this was moving. Now when I put the south to the south side, I'm going to get the same response. Well, it pushed that away because the magnets weigh more with the south on this end. It don't spin. It just pushed it away. But you saw that. And I'm going to do the reverse. And it's hard for this to drag it in because the magnets are so heavy. I'm putting north to south on this side. And it'll pull together. And when I put south to north on this side, it'll pull together. Okay, now you understand that the rotation of a magnet is always one direction. It can't change. It cannot change. It's always going to be in one direction. Uh, I showed you on the, the videos which direction it is, and I'm trying to think now. I think when you look at a magnet from the north side towards the south, it's clockwise, and when you look from the south side to the north, it's counterclockwise. I may be wrong. I forget. But that's not the point. It's just that the magnet, a natural magnet, always rotates in a particular direction. It can't change that. It's always going to rotate static charge coming in. If you saw my magnetism video or you understand my theory, the static charge coming in to a magnet is going through it one way. South to north, the north side, the acceleration coming in because it's going through it in one direction has to speed up. Uh, the north side can't get in, so it bounces around to the south side, but they both rotate in the same direction. This is going to prove that. And I'm going to use this DC current. I have an AC wall unit into this, which I showed you all ago, a DC adapter to show you that. So I've got my positive on the left, negative on the right, which this is going in. Uh, I think it's counterclockwise. Look at my wires. And we're going in counterclockwise. This way. Goes in this way. Hits that wire. Goes in that way. This is my solder wire up here between the two halves of the, the hemispherical coils. So that they work together in one direction. They're both wired in the same direction. So... You know, it doesn't matter which way I send the current, it's going to go either this way or it's going to go this way. But depending on which end of it you look at, it depend on which way it looks like.
but the magnet cannot change its direction of the ether static charge rotation. It's always going to be the same. And I can show you that because when I change the direction of rotation that these coils, these hemispherical coils make around the magnet, it will show you the difference. And I'm going to explain why the ether static charge of my theory, that there's an, a static charge coming in to feed all these atoms, that's why this does this. So we're hooked up red to the left, black to the right. I'm going to turn it on. And it pushes. And I'll let me put the coils towards each other, close around the magnet, and then turn it on again. They push away. They push away because they're, they're opposing. And we understand that. The rotation of the magnetic field of the magnet and the rotation of the magnetic field of the copper are in opposite directions. They're hitting each other. That's not really the reason they push away. The reason they push away is because since the magnet cannot get its static charge or its, its electron functions rotating in the right direction, it gets rid of these so that the, the gravity, natural gravity, can come in in between here, in between these, and rotate in the right direction for what the magnet needs, which opposes what these are doing. That's why it separates. If I got rid of these bolts and pushed them farther apart, it would shoot these uh, copper coils way away. It would shoot them far enough away where they, where they wouldn't affect the rotation opposition. Now, let's change our, our leads. And I'll put the red on the right, the black on the left. And now our rotation of, of electric current is going to go with the magnet in the same direction that the magnet needs. Let's see what happens. One, two, three. They pull together. It helps it. It's an assistance. It's an assistance. We're all working together. We're happy. And I'll do it again. One, two, three. They pull together. We're all helping each other. The rotation direction of the magnetic field of the copper is assisting the rotational direction of the magnet. And I'm going to swap them again just to show you that I can reverse that and make them <laughs> mad at each other. So I'll put them close. I've reversed. Now I'm red left, black right. One, two, three. Energize. It pushes away because it's got the magnet has got to have its rotation, which it cannot change. I can change this of the coils by swapping the leads, but I can't change the direction of rotation of the ether static charge going into the magnet. Now, when the magnet says, I have to have a particular direction, if you're going the wrong way, you have to get away from me, and the static charge, gravity, comes in between these opened coils and feeds the magnet what it needs in the right direction. Now, I want to show you something else. I can turn these on, and they're pushing away, right? It's like, you get away, I need it my particular direction. The harder I push them in, the more resistance I get. More resistance. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the same thing a resistor does. That's what resistors do. In an electric current, that's what resistors do. But I just wanted to show you. And if you notice, when I really held it tight together, it spun the magnet. The magnet wanted to spin to go, well, if you're going to do it this way, I will spin to accommodate what I need to to get my charge the way I need to. If you notice, I got blue, right, red, left. I'll turn it on. I'm going to loosen these just a little bit. And if you watch... When I push this in, look at that magnet. It turns. It turns. It turns and says, hey, we're working together now. Now look. The magnet turns, so they're pulling. 
It's accelerations of gravity. And that's why I tightened them so tight so they couldn't spin, is to show you it will push away to get static charge coming in for the right direction, and it will pull together when it's going in the right direction to assist. That's, that's what it is. Now, AC current, and I'm going to show you next, this is DC. It, it's always going one direction or the other, but the rotation is either this way or that way, this way or that way. AC goes back and forth, and it makes a complete different result. But I wanted to show you. That's why a magnet does that. When you, when you set it in something where it can't, I tied it down where it can't spin, it pushes this away so it can have the ether static charge coming in to rotate in the right direction for what it needs. That's why it pushes. That's why it pushes them away. And when I hook it up the other way, it pulls because they're working with it. It says, well, come, I'm happy. Join the party. But when you run it the other way, it says, get away from me. I've got my own agenda. And you're not working with it. And uh, AC is back and forth. It's uh, help me. You're helping me. You're not helping me. You're helping me. You're not helping me. And there's that same thing in between each AC current, even 60 cycles a second. It'll go, you're helping, you're not. You're helping, you're not. You're helping, you're not. You're helping, you're not. And I'm going to show you that next. But what I also wanted to show was how the, the, the spiraling of the rotation of the magnetic field on the magnet interacts with the uh, rotation of the magnetic field on the wires. If you watch, I'll put the south near the red wire. And when I turn it on, it jumps over to the middle of the magnet. But if I reverse the magnet on this side, it pushes it away. And it does the same thing when you reverse north and south. One side pushes it. If you reverse the orientation of the, if you reverse the orientation of the, the uh, rotation, it does the opposite. It pulls it. Okay, now with the, with the, the magnets near the uh, AC part of the transformer, which output from the AC part of the transformer, north, south, north, south. I'm going to show what the magnets do the interaction is between the AC wires and the magnet. Watch how it bounces. And I have to use this rubber pad under here or the magnets also bounce. So I'm going to flip it over and put it under the other wire on the other side and show you what that does. It just bounces. So there's no pull or push, it's just this back and forth. Like I said, it, it's, it doesn't know whether it's, it's north and south, north and south, north and south, so it pulls, attracts, repels, retracts, repels, attracts, repels on both wires. Either one does the same thing. So I wanted to make that clear too. Okay, this is my first attempt at making hemispherical coils. They didn't hold together, but you're looking at uh, 12 volts AC going through it. Trying to get it to rotate where you can see it by the dark spot on, on the magnet. And it's an adapter, but it's putting out an AC current, 60 cycles a second. It's hard to do without. I've got rotation now. And the magnet's trying to spin because it's going north, south, north, south, north, south, because the current goes back and forth through them coils. I have to keep the frequency right and the pressure right. I understand the frequency of the electricity is at a particular, the, the, the electricity is coming in at a particular frequency, but when I force the magnet, it's not just the vibration. If I do it just right, I can get the magnet to spin. I was hoping to see this on video I might get a better way to make the video because I know that you can't see the cameras not picking up the rotation like I can see it with my own eyes <laughs> 